We'll consider now how the frequency of a sound wave perceived by a detector relates to the actual frequency emitted by the source. When both source and detector are stationary, the emitted and received frequency are equal. When the source and the detector move relative to each other, however, there is a shift or a change in the frequency that the detector receives. This is known as the Doppler effect and we will consider now the effect in the case of a moving source. Let's consider a source that emits not our typical sine waves, but sound bleeps periodically every t seconds. It's all the same anyway, but it will be easier actually to visualize what is happening if we actually have bleeps. Emitting periodic bleeps looks like a square wave. Here you can see the initial and subsequent bleeps traveling toward the detector with a velocity equal to the velocity of sound. So let's look at the source as it bleeps one step at a time. We begin at time equal zero when the source emits the first bleep. T seconds later, or at time equal t, the first bleep now has traveled a certain distance d toward the detector and the source is about to emit another bleep. As the bleeps are emitted with period T, the sound wave traveling toward the detector will also have a period T, and of course frequency F, which will be equal to 1 over T. Here now the time is equal to 2T, and the source is about to emit a third bleep. Let's look at the spacing of those bleeps. The distance between two adjacent bleeps is the wavelength of the wave, lambda, and is equal to the distance traveled by the wave in time equal to the period T. In other words, lambda is equal to the velocity of sound times t, or v sound over f in terms of the frequency. Let's now look at what happens when the source is actually moving toward the detector with the velocity v source. The top diagram here will show what happens when the source is stationary, and the bottom diagram will show the bleeps as the source moves toward the detector with the velocity v source. Again, we begin with the first bleep at time equals zero and then we look at time equal t. The source is about to emit a second bleep, but now it has actually moved to a different location, a little bit closer to the detector. So the spacing, lambda prime, is actually smaller than what it were when the source was stationary. The wavelength of the wave coming to the detector now will be shorter than what it was before. The difference between the wavelength when the source was stationary and now when it is moving is actually the distance d traveled by the source in time interval t, which is equal to v source times t. So we can write that the new spacing lambda prime is the difference between lambda, the original spacing, and the distance d, or lambda minus v source times t. Given lambda, the wavelength when the source was not moving, was equal to v sound times t, we can write for a lambda prime that is equal to v sound times t minus v source times t. We can also factor out t and we get the following expression. The new spacing between the bleeps, lambda prime, will be equal to the difference between the speed of sound and the speed of the source times the period t. Now remember that the product of the wavelength and the frequency of the wave must equal to the speed of the wave, in our case v sound. So if one is modified, in this case the wavelength, the other also must change. In other words, as we see that the bleeps are now closer together, they will be arriving more frequently at the detector. So the detector will therefore receive a wave with increased frequency. So we write lambda prime, which must be equal to the velocity of sound over f prime, is equal to v sound minus v source times t, or 1 over f in terms of the frequency. So the frequency at the, at the detector f prime must be equal to the frequency emitted by the source times the following factor f v sound over v sound minus v source. Or alternatively, we can write that the frequency f prime must be equal to the frequency of the wave emitted by the source times 1 over 1 minus v source over v sound. 
here we have divided by the speed of sound both the numerator and the denominator of the fraction. Now let's see what happens if the source is moving but away from the detector. We begin again at time 0 when the source is about to emit the first bleep. At time t when the source is about to emit the second bleep, it has already moved away from the detector. We see immediately that the spacing between the bleeps now will be larger than before. The difference again will be equal to the distance d traveled by the source equal to v source times t. But while before the new wavelength was smaller and we had to subtract that distance d from the original wavelength, now the new wavelength is larger so we have to add the distance d to the original wavelength or lambda prime must be equal to lambda plus d or lambda plus v source times t again following the same steps lambda prime in this case will be equal to the sum of the velocity of the sound and velocity of the source times t or in terms of the frequencies we're going to have v sound over the frequency received by the detector will be equal to the speed of sound plus the speed of source times 1 over the frequency emitted by the source. So we see that the frequency received by the detector will be equal to the frequency emitted by the source times the following factor 1 over 1 plus v source over v sound. So we see that if the source of the wave moves toward or away from the detector, that will cause a change in the spacing of the bleeps, and hence a change in the frequency with which they arrive at the detector. The frequency of the wave detected then will be modified from the original frequency with which the wave is emitted by a certain factor. In the case of, of a source moving toward the detector, the factor is equal to 1 over 1 minus V source over V sound, and in the case of a source moving away from the detector, the factor is 1 over 1 plus V source over V sound. As both factors appear very similar in form, the formula can actually be combined into one. The frequency of the wave received by the detector will be equal to the frequency emitted by the source times 1 over 1 minus or plus V source over V sound. Here we will use minus to obtain the higher frequency for the case of sources moving toward the detector and we'll use plus to get lower frequencies for sources moving away from the detector.